Alright. Here we go, guys. So, it's not too complicated. It's not too extreme if you know your rules from last week. So, it says, uh, so let's just get right into it. So, these are all just example problems. It says, for positive acute angles A and B, so we know that A and B are in quadrant one. <laughs> Excuse me. It is known that sine A is 9 over 41 and cosine B is 3 fifths. Find the value of cosine A minus B. Okay. Give yourself a chance. Do you know the composite argument property for cosine A minus B? Yet and say yes, say you do know it. Yeah, cosine A minus B is cosine A, cosine B, plus or minus? It's plus. Plus sine A, sine B. Once you do this a few times, two or three times, you memorize them. For now, you can go ahead and, uh, and uh, have uh, your formulas out, but for the exam, you won't have your formulas, guys. Uh, for the nine weeks exam, you might have your formulas, but not for the, the you know, uh, are we close to the end of the nine weeks? Well, okay, perfect. So the next week will be a unit exam, not a nine weeks exam. All right, here we go. So notice that they already give you sine of A. So I'm going to put check mark where it says sine of A. And notice that they already give you cosine of B. So I'm going to put check mark for cosine of B. We don't have cosine A and sine B, but we can get them. Chop, how? Like this. I'm going to do a little grid. You don't have to do a grid, but I'm doing a little grid because we're in quadrant one, and later on they won't be in quadrant one. So here's angle A, and this says, is not to scale. This says that sine A is 9 over 41. Remember, sine is, remember Sokotoa. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite, 9, hypotenuse, 41. Here's another grid, and here's another triangle. This triangle is angle B. Or that's angle B right here. And this says cosine B is 3 fifths. So 3 and 5. It's really easy to find the missing side. I think this is the perfect uh, triplet there. So to find that missing side, it's just going to be the square root of 41 squared minus 9 squared. So I take my calculator. Oh, I should have had it open. I'm sorry, guys. I take my calculator here. Come on, buddy. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Run fast, fast. Bam. Square root of 41 squared minus 9 squared. And I push enter, and there it is. It's 40. So I put a 40 here. And then for this one, this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle, so I put a 4 there. If you don't know that, no big deal. You could have found this missing side by doing square root of 5 squared minus 4 squared. 5 squared is 25. Uh, 4 squared is 16. The difference between uh, 25 and 16. Oh, wait. I put 4 there. I meant I meant 3. Man. Because the 3 is the one that I have. So 3 squared is 9. 25 minus 9 is 16. The square root of 16 is 4. Are we okay with that, guys? All right. Here we go. We got everything we need. Cosine A. Cosine A is right here. And Jason over upon you. 40 over 41. Cosine B. I go to the B one. B adjacent over upon you is 3 over 5. Or that one was given, actually. Plus sine A. I go back to A. Opposite over upon you is that was given. 9 over 41. And then sine B. I go to B. 4 fifths. And we're pretty much done, TBH. Uh, let's see. 120... What's 41 times 5? 205. 5 times 4 is 20. So 41, add another 5. Yeah, 205. 9 times 4 is 36. And then 205 again. And then 120 plus 36, 20, 30, 40, 50. 156 over 205. I don't think it reduces. I would leave it alone. How do we feel, guys? Everything okay? Nothing crazy, right? All right. Yay. See, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much what you're going to be doing, guys. So look at this one. This one says, uh, find the value of 10A plus B. So without looking at any, well, you can look at your graphs or you can look at your notes. Let's see if you remember. Do you remember what 10A plus B is? 10A plus 10B over 
perfect. 1 minus 10a, 10b. All right, again, we're going to do a little grid. Here's my little grid. I'm just going to do everything in red here. I like the color red. Here's angle A. Actually, we don't even need 10A because we already have 10A. We, so I'm going to call this angle B. Angle B. And then opposite of our hypotenuse, 24 over 25. So we're going to figure that length out. So I'm going to take my calculator. I'm going to do Pythagorean theorem. Square root of 25 squared minus 24 squared. And what's that going to be? Square root of 49? So 7. That's a 7. I got everything I need. Equals 10a is given. 28 over 45 minus, up oh, plus, sorry, 10b, 24 over 7. Opposite over adjacent. 24 over 7. All over 1 minus 10a, 28 over 45 times 10b, 24 over 7. I would type it carefully into the calculator and then just tell the calculator to give me a fraction. Shove how? Like this. I go to my calculator, I push clear, I'm going to push alpha y equals, I push enter, there's a little fraction. I push alpha y equals again. Look, I got a little fraction. Give me what 10a was again. 28 over 45 plus, what was 10b? What was it again? 27? 24 over 7. All right, and then I come down here, I go 1 minus, I'm just going to put it in parentheses, let's see, parentheses, alpha y equals, enter 28 over 45, and I'm going to close parentheses, times, open another one, alpha y equals 24 over 7. Notice that I'm making it look exactly like my notes. Uh, let me clear that, make it look exactly and then look, let the calculator do all the hard work. That looks exactly like, and then you just push enter, and look, the calculator does all the hard work for you. Negative 1276 over 357. Negative 12, I already forgot. No, 1276 over 257. Can we do that? We can, right? Si se puede, folks. Si se puede. We can do it, guys. Okay, look at this one. I know they're all in quadrant one. Don't worry, we're going to change that in a little bit. Given that cosine x is squared of 17 over 5, and that sine y is squared of 2 over 2, and that angles x and y are both in quadrant one, find the exact values of cosine x plus y. Okay, first, do you know what cosine x plus y is? And hopefully you say yes. Yes, I do. Cosine x plus y is cosine x, cosine y, minus sine x sine y. See? I draw my first quadrant. I'm in quadrant one. Here's my first triangle. Go from the origin. Make it a right triangle like that. Call this angle x. It says that uh, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent, square root of 17, hypotenuse, 5. Go to the next one. Here's another one. Right triangle. Start from the origin. This is angle y. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite, square root of 2 over hypotenuse, 2. Are we still okay? All right, here we go. I'm going to get this side. So I'm going to go square root. 5 is bigger, so 5 squared minus square root of 17 squared. So let's see what we get. Uh, 5 squared is 25, 17 squared. The square root of 17 squared is 17. And the difference between 25 and 17, 5, 6, 7, 8, square root of 8. And that is the same thing as 4 times 2, so 2 square root of 2. Does everyone know how we got 2 square root of 2 from square root of 8? Right? 4 times 2 is 8, and the square root of 4 is 2, so that goes to the front. This is the only thing you have left inside the radical. Okay, so this is 2 square root of 2. All right, now let's figure out this guy. Hopefully you can see that square root of 2, but if you don't, no big deal. 2 squared minus square root of 2 squared. And that is going to be square root of 4 minus 2. So square root of 2. Square root of 2. You could have also figured it out from like the unit circle. That's obviously 45 degrees. Uh, where is uh, sine square root of 2 over 2 when x is square root of 2 over 2? So cosine y, cosine of y is also square root of 2 over 2. Okay, you guys ready? All right, here we go. Equals 
Cosine X, not given to me. Oh, yeah, it is given to me. Square root of 17 over 5. Close it. Times. Cosine Y. I go over here. Adjacent over upon you. Square root of 2 over 2. Minus sine X. Sine X is square root of 2 over 2. Oh, sorry, sorry. Nope. 2 square root of 2 over 5. 2 square root of 2 over 5. And then sine Y. That one square root of 2 over 2. And then let me erase this so no one gets confused there. All right, you're done. Now you just got to simplify, guys. Simplifying is just your algebra your algebra stuff. So you're just going to go, let's see, square root of 17 times square root of 2. Uh, what's that? Square root of 34? Square root of 34 over 10. I just doubled the 17, right? 2040, yeah. Minus square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 over 10. So the denominators are the same, so you can just write square root of 34 minus 4 over 10. And that's it. Leave it alone. How do you guys feel about this? Is this too extreme or is this okay? Yeah, not bad. Okay. There are going to be some easy questions. Uh, not today, though, but eventually you'll get those easy ones. It just says, x are from U8. Use the appropriate angle sum formula to simplify the following expression. Cosine 4x, cosine 6x, minus sine 4x, sine 6x. You recognize it. That's like an A. That's like a B. A, B. And you're like, wait a minute. I know that. Cosine, cosine, minus sine, sine. There has to be a single cosine. Is it plus or minus? Plus. So it is equal to 1 cosine, 4x, plus 6x. What's 4x plus 6x? 10x. And there it is. That's it. What do you guys think? I know it's early and it's Friday and everyone's tired, but math hopefully wakes you up. All right. Uh, I think we got two last ones, and then we'll set you guys loose. These are the harder ones. But relax. The concept is the same. You guys ready? Given that, so underline these or circle that one. And cosine y is between 27 and 360. I'll circle that one. X is between 0 and 90 degrees. That means X is in quadrant 1. Y is between 270 and 360. So that means Y is in quadrant 4. Are we okay with that? So here we go. Quadrant 1. Angle X. They give me that cosine is adjacent over upon you. 1, 6. Are we okay with that? Okay, 6 squared is 36, 1 squared is 1, 36 minus 1 is, so this is the square root of 35. All I did was Pythagorean theorem. Is everyone okay with that? Okay, here we go with quadrant 4. Exaggerate quadrant 4, so here's quadrant 4. Start at the origin, draw a right triangle, perpendicular to the x-axis. This is angle y. That's angle Y. The hypotenuse is never negative. Uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, 1 over 4. The hypotenuse is like a radius. So the hypotenuse is never negative. What is 4 squared? What is 1 squared? 16 minus 1. So this is square root of 15. Now because I'm below the x-axis, this is going to be negative. Is everyone okay? All right, here we go, guys. They want cosine x plus y, so I'm going to write it right here. Cosine x plus y is equal to cosine x, cosine y, minus sine x, sine y. And I'm just going to plug in. Cosine x is 1, 6. Cosine y, I go to the y one. Oh, actually, they, they give you that one. 1, 4. So, okay, that's why they give us that one. We don't got sine x and sine y, but we can get it from our triangles. So sine x is square root of 35 over 6. I'm just looking at this, opposite over hypotenuse. And sine y, opposite over hypotenuse. So negative square root of 15 over 4. Are we okay? All right. So here's my answer. I'm going to come over here. So 1 times 1 is 1. 
and 6 times 4 is 24. Negative times a negative is a, so I'm going to put plus, a square root, 35 times 15. I don't know what that number is off the top of my head. So I'm just going to take my little calculator. I'm going to go 35 times 15 and 525. Ooh, okay. Hopefully there's flags uh, flying in your head, and I'll tell you why. Over 6 times 4 is 24. Notice that answer is not in there. I mean, it is. It is in there, but not the way it is written. The reason why 525 can be broken down is because of the 25. What's the square root of 25? 5. So how many quarters do you need for you to have $5.25? Is it 22, 21, 25, 25, 15, 20? That's 21 quarters. 25 times 21. Do you see how we did that, guys? What's the square root of 25? So this is 1 over 24 plus 5 square root of 21 over 24. Um, our denominator is the same. 1 plus 5 square root of 21 over 24. Si se puede, you can do this. You're smart. How do we feel right now? How do we feel right now? Okay, that was dumb. I won't do that again. Okay. That's from a song, but you guys probably never heard of it. I don't know. I just know it's from a song. What song is that? Do you guys have you guys ever heard of it? How do you feel right now? No. Yeah. Okay, I don't know. Okay. Sorry, YouTube. Don't give it a thumbs down. All right. Well, I mean, I don't have a thousand subscribers, so it's okay. Plus, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it for the money. I want everyone, if someone wants to learn and they want to learn about this, I'm more than happy to teach them. All right. I want sine x minus y. What I'm going to do first, this night, x is between 90 and 180. That's quadrant 2. Uh, y is between 180 and 270. That's quadrant 3. So here we go. I'm going to exaggerate quadrant 2. I'm going to draw from the origin, right triangle, perpendicular to the x-axis. I'm going to call this angle x. They gave me sine x, so 3 tenths. Opposite, 3, hypotenuse 10. 10 squared is 100. 3 squared is 9. 100 minus 9. So it's a square root of 91, and I put a negative in the front because I am in quadrant 2. Does that make sense, guys? Okay. I go to the next one that's in quadrant 3, so I exaggerate quadrant 3. So here, here I am exaggerating quadrant 3. Start at the origin, draw a right triangle perpendicular to the x-axis. And then, uh, let's see, what do they give me? Negative 2 thirds, opposite over hypotenuse. Put the negative with the 2. The hypotenuse is never negative. It acts like a radius. It's like a radius, guys, so it's never negative. Ah. Are we okay so far? All right, here we go. 3 squared. 9, negative 2 squared. 9 minus 4. This is square root of 5. Because I'm in quadrant 3, I put a what? Negative. I'm ready. We're ready. Sine of, I know, some of you guys are tired. It's Friday, I know. Sine of x minus y. Sine x. Cosine y. Plus or minus? Minus. This one is minus. Minus cosine x. Sine y. The sine toggles and keeps the sine. If that makes sense. See, it starts with an I. S, it starts with a sine. So sine x cosine y minus cosine x sine y. All right, here we go, guys. They, yep. Cosine doesn't toggle. Cosine, cosine, sine, sine, and then if it's plus, it's minus, minus a plus. Yeah, minus, minus. All right, sine x, 3 tenths. And then it's uh, cosine y. This is my y here. Did they give me cosine y? Nope. Here's my y. So cosine y is negative square root of 5 over 3 minus cosine x is negative square root of 91 over 10. And then sine y is negative 2 thirds. Okay. Um, now, now we just simplify. Uh, positive times the negative is a negative. Negative 3 square root of 5 over 30. Minus, negative times the negative is a positive, but I have a minus here, so it's going to say the minus there. And we're going to write uh, 
2 square root of 91 over 30 as well. Are we still okay, guys? All right, here we go. I don't see that answer in there. It is in there, but they didn't write it the way we did the last one with common denominator. How many times does 3 go into 30? 10 times. Keep the negative. So negative square root of 5 over 10 minus, how many times does 2 go into 30? 15. Square root of 91 over 15. Now UH has a habit of writing a constant in the front. So UH has a habit of doing negative 1 tenth with a square root of 5 on the side. That's fine. Minus 1 15th with a square root of 91 on the side. So there it is. How do you feel, guys? All right, so relax. We're not going to hit you with UH right off the bat. So you have delta math. So you will be guided through some of these questions. Try to do as much as you can on your own. Of course, you can always ask for help. But try to do as much as you can on your own to see if you can be battle tested. And yeah, that's all you're doing today, guys. Cool? Good job, guys.